Yeah. In Dominican Republic, they just will wrap a, uh, a, a chicken. Chicken. They will hit it by the by here, and the chicken will. And then, How's it go? <laughs> and then they put it in hot water and take everything out and open it. Oh. Crazy. I like how the chicken dies though. Yeah. How do it again? One more time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! What a hectic first day we had flying to Africa! But when we arrived, it was a breath of fresh air. Except for when we were walking in the field where there was poop everywhere. Oh my goodness! Stinky, stinky! Are you ready for day two of our safari ventures where you get to meet with our tour guide, reader lookalike Sammy, who shows us around his village? We get to see how they use cow poop and collect the methane gas which they use for cooking. Getting lost in the village and learning about the different types of bananas, lady toilet paper, bungo flavored dancing, sugar mommies and daddies, and tasting the famous Kahawa coffee while hanging out with a beautiful cat named Munch. So are you ready to learn more about Africa on day two of our safari ventures? We are doing a coffee tour. Right? In a, in, a, in a city tour. We're in the village. That's the church. There was a church there. There's a dog following him there. Love your dog. You gotta be careful for cars here. Someone almost got ran over. Someone almost got hit. Someone's leaking some water. Our first stop is the local courthouse where they have four laws. Local court. Court for court? judges. Yeah. Do you have court? any judges here? No. 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 Lawyers? No. Lawyers but for the judge house? Everything. You judge no, everything. Judge, yeah. judge everything. <laughs> yeah. So that is our courthouse. Up here, we have four laws that you're not allowed to break them at all. At all. Four rules. Rule number one, you are not allowed to have an argument with anybody who is above your age, especially mother. So in case here, you do have an argument with your mother, who is the worst? You can have with your father, and then you can disappear. You can have with your brother and you can disappear. If you argue with your mother, that's the first. First, 70 lashes. Oh, oh, really? 70 oh lashes if you argue with your mother. Okay. Yeah. So, not allowed to do saggy pants or argue with anybody who is above your age. Oh, that's yeah. you get whipped. Respect. Yeah. Respect. Very strong. Do people still get Whips? Yeah. Huh? Here? Okay. Yeah. Like, what, there? What, what do they like? Just, just like this? Oh, or? no, they use a wooden stick. Oh. oh, yes. Rule number two. This is the rule for most of us here. This is a law for the married people. People who live together. Uh, first of all, for the men, that's help for the men. You're not now allowed to shout, yell, Use abusive language to your woman. Oh. Why are they looking at each other? Uh, Why are they looking at each other? Yeah. Not a lot, my friend. And what happened if the wife is yelling at What happened if the wife is yelling at the husband? He should take a walk. So it's a different culture. So yeah, here, yeah. if you walk away from you, it's a big problem, right? But for us here also, we have, if you just uh, uh, use bad language, you will be fine. Rule number three is a rule about the funerals and weddings. Funeral and weddings. If somebody died here, that's a community problem. It's not a family problem. Everybody will participate into the funeral and wedding. So the smallest funeral can just be like a 500. Wow. Yeah, 500. The rest, everybody's like, the 500 as a child. It's like a 10 years old kid, nobody knows him, it's just the family and people around. But let's say you're about 50, 60, 70, 80s, uh, you have been marrying a lot of people. Uh, you know a lot, your family, you went to school, everywhere. So maybe roughly 3,000 people will oh, come. Wow. And all these 3,000 people will donate the money. 
So the family that lost somebody will never do anything sometimes. Never. Mm -hmm. Over here. The last law, this is a school law which is not that interested, is if you give a present to a student that it is 30 years in jail. This is a country law. Oh, if you're not married? No, no, no a student. Get somebody pregnant. A student. Oh. Yeah. Oh, student. Yeah. yeah. Tanzanian law? Yeah, that's a country law. Don't interfere with a student. Student, 30 straight years. But if there are two, two students? Both of them are students, yeah. then what? If they're both students, yeah, that, that they're both gonna lose the school. But Though what? the boy can go to jail also. And not the girl. Not the girl. That's not the, fair. the girl will just go home. Uh, will just go home and take care of the baby without the father. Oh. They implement oh. this law because here, you know, we are paying bride price. When I want to marry a girl, okay, you pay uh, the money. I pay, diary. I pay, yeah, diary. I pay, diary. yeah, diary. I pay to the family. Oh, the opposite. Yeah. For us here, we pay. So this make that, for example, because I'm gonna pay, and maybe if there is one girl in my family, I have just one sister, and I have one sister also. Mm -hmm. If my family sit down and say, you know what? My father will sit down and calculate. We are five people and one girl. So it's like four boys, one girl. Mm -hmm. So she will make a calculation like, uh, my brother need to pay 10 cows, for me 10 cows, for my brother 10, so he will say 40 cows, well, 40 cows plus theirs. It's like, okay, we need 50 cows, or oh, we need this amount of money, we need this, so he can get enough to pay for mm. us. So sometimes they say, why should I send a girl to school? while she would just be married and no doubt. Thank you Sami for sharing your justice system with us. Now that we learned the four laws, Sami had one more thing he wanted to tell us to see if it should be on paper or law. This has become a big problem in the village. What are your thoughts about this potential law? You know what? One one law that uh, we are thinking. <laughs> this is what happens. We are thinking to make, and also we are thinking like, should we put it on law or should we put it in cause? Now here there is a big problems of sugar mummies and sugar daddies. Oh. This is a new problems. You see, a twenty years old man, he's dating a sixty years old woman. Huh? Oh yes. Yeah, sugar, sugar mama. Sugar mama. Yes. Sugar mama. And there's like, and it's very nice. It's like everyone says, "Why should I date a twenty-five years old girl? He need an iPhone. He need this. He need this. Too much <laughs> too asking. Expensive. Yeah, too expensive. I just need to get an uh, old woman. Maybe he's just retired. If I ask the money for good clothes, <laughs> a nice phone, I got it, and then I'm done. So wherever she needs me, then I'm there. Wow. And then I know he have a husband, so I won't call any time. She, she have to call me when she need me. The same things to girls. Girls say, ah man, I don't want the young boy. Does he have money? No. no. Can he take me out no. to the expensive hotel? Wow. Can he buy me a phone? Can he buy me a laptop? Can expensive he buy me stuff. This? No. <laughs> Better I can just have sugar daddy. Sugar daddy. We met once a week. I have money to live out is taking care of it that's in your life huh? so we are thinking because they can hide you won't see but it's there so they want to put it like a cuss if a young uh, man dated his mother yeah, mother's age, right? yeah it's gonna be his other people's like one he was her mother was 45 he is 19. He's dating a 65 years old. That's grandma. Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of like the town. Are you dance? Yeah. Dance the church. How, do, how does uh, how, what's the, the the dance from this town? Uh, bongo flavor. Bongo flavor? Yeah. Show me how to bongo flavor. Depending with the beat. <laughs> 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 yeah. We want to do some bongo flavoring. Yeah. There's a church over there, so and they're having some the, fun. The service start different services, yeah. different times. Like the one I went, it starts at six thirty, ended at four. Oh, okay. Another starts at ten, ending at one. Oh, okay.
That's what we were hearing earlier. Yeah. I don't know about you, but these people have some beautiful voices. I've heard some sopranos and some opera going on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? What's this? Coffee, coffee beans. This is, the, this is the coffee beans. So, guys, if we started the coffee procedures here, uh, the first, first coffee grow here back in 1872. Uh, that's the first coffee that we had it here. Then it started to grow, 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 but production started at 1900. It was growing superb. Up 1945. Sorry if we have British here. But from 1945 to 1961, British took over. Mm -hmm. Tea production started. The market of coffee started to collapse in 1964. Yeah. After the Julius Nyerere. We were getting like a kilo of coffee. If you convert the money at that time, the power of the money, it's like a $50 now for one kilo, 2.2 pound. Do you use kilo pound? Pounds. Pounds. 2.2 pounds was like a $50 if we look the value of money now. So the farmer had really good money to send all the kids to schools, to build hospitals, to build schools, to build roads and houses. After independence, the, the president wanted to equalize the coffee because we left from Germany colony the British, British. Mm. colony and they were tea mm. so the market collapsed from 50 to 5 dollars farmer were so freaking out about that they want to know what can they do to keep the price up somebody advised him why don't we try Brazilian variety mm -hmm. everybody cut the Ethiopian out 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 plant Brazilian Brazilian coffee came up with a sickness leaf rust I will show you. That rust needed a lot of chemicals, needed a lot of pesticide. Those pesticide and chemical, the price went up from $5 to $30. And the price of coffee collapsed from $5 to $1. Everybody didn't see the point of coffee. Cut the coffee out, implemented banana, avocados, and other food crops to survive. So, uh, from 2000, we decided to go back and to start to do organic and fair trade market. So this is back the <coughs> Ethiopian coffee, the original one from the old days. No chemicals or pesticide we're using on this. You said Ethiopia? The variety Ethiopia. of coffee, yeah. Because in Africa, Ethiopian is the uh, original, is a native coffee grows. Yeah. yeah. But here we do have Arabica and Robusta. Arabica and Robusta. Robusta. Those is the two types of coffee we have in the world. Mm -hmm. Arabica and Robusta. Arabica grow on high elevations and Robusta grow in low elevations. Mm -hmm. So, the coffee season starts January to June. That's the pre preparation of beans and they develop slowly, mm -hmm. slowly. June to December, that's the time that we go to the farm and we harvest the red beans. But now we are going through one of the hugest problems about weather. Uh, Climate change. Warming. We have a rain at the time that is not rain, we have a sun at the time that is not supposed to be. So that's one of the major coffee problems now. Yeah, so this is one of the farm. You can see we have banana in between. Mm -hmm. yes. Banana is to provide shade. In mm -hmm. the old days, we didn't have any corn on the field. We didn't have any bananas. Everything we had was coffee. But now when the price went down, people had to move to other things to give up the money. So here, after we bring the coffee from the water, we bring it up here. And when we bring it up here, we have to wash it for three days, dry it for two weeks. And when we wash it for three days, the coffee that you see here, this, it's coming on the wrong time because they came too early. Mm. So we have hail rain. It's starting soon, maybe in the beginning of between 15 to 20 of March. What did it call? Hail, hail. Hail storm. Yeah. So when they hit the beans, the beans will be frozen and be dark like these ones. Oh. So all this, it's mixed together. 
here mm -hmm. but we have to go through and pick one by one separate them the good beans here the bad beans here the good beans uh, we send it to the factory because we are in cooperative of 50 farmer produce 20 ton so after we dry for two weeks and sort out the good the bad the good thing uh, in between uh, june to december everything is full spread of coffee here mm. so we split one by one the good quality i say it's got fair trade and organic and the low quality coffee we used to throw them away but now we are selling it to starbucks oh, that's how they're crappy cut no 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 Serious? Serious. I can go to Starbucks and say this is coffee from Tanzania? Yeah. yeah and it's not a good one. So also. what we said, <laughs> you know, the bad, thing is, good too. the <laughs> thing is, when they come to buy coffee here, yeah. if you brought them this, they say it's too expensive. Yeah. Because they don't want to buy this 2.2 pounds for $6. dollars they can get this here for $2, 2.2 oh. pounds. That's why we don't throw them away. If so guys here we are making biogas which, with what we call methane gas Methane. yeah from the cow we collect it kind of down here what steam tanks mm -hmm. uh, we take the pipe when the poop go to the tank we collect the gas we use for cooking and leftover is the best compost mm -hmm. because it's fertilizer for the ground mm -hmm. yeah. that's awesome okay. Naja, we should start collecting that from you in the morning <laughs> methane gas, methane gas. Gas? Yeah, they, they, they collect cow methane gas cow in here and they use it for uh, cooking. Oh, okay. You took them. Yeah. 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 That's, your wife? Yeah, yeah. That's, your, that's what they do. Oh, girlfriend. Well, here, here is wife. Yeah, this, you should call your wife. How, yeah. how many have you been together? Nine. Nine Eight years. years. That's, that's almost nine. You want to go check it out? Hi, look at the kutro. The who? The dog. No, kutro. So it's... it's oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. It came down there. So we from have, poop? Yeah. Down, this is the seam tanks. And then when... Below? Yeah. Is so that... it's going in here. We have like a... You see the hole here? Yeah. Yeah, it's going down there. When it's full, it's go down there. And here we go. Tank. Collect. And then the gas for cooking and let go here. That's a leftover compost? Yeah. And then that we use for the farm. And then that's a leftover tire from someone's yeah. car? my car your car oh my oh, gosh this is where you so this is the, they so what they do is they they yeah. the cows poop there the poop goes down in here it goes into here and then it goes below as a tank and then the methane they collect it here and then all the gas gets taken to cook and then they put the rest of the compost in there to for yeah. fertilization mm -hmm. wow that's pretty cool In Dominican Republic, they just walk yeah, rapid, uh, 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 chicken. Chicken. They will hit it by the by here, and the chicken will. Yeah. And <laughs> How's it go? <laughs> <laughs> and then they put it in hot water and take everything out and open it. Oh. Crazy. I like how the chicken dies though. Yeah. I'll do it again. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> My friend. Silk plant. Oh, yes. Toilet paper. How did you know? You experienced. Yeah. You have been the, for the She long. lived here so long. This is a lady toilet paper. Yeah. You want to see what men use? Pine cones. No. Men <laughs> no, That's why you hear them howling. Oh! <laughs> see papaya? Mm -hmm. we oh, use oh wow. Paper. That's a big tree compared to yeah. ours. It's a very good medicine for the ringworms. Ringworms. What? Ring ringworms, yeah. And also for the soft. If you just get a green papaya and you smash, it will give a white milk. That milk you can use as a salt. We got lost? Oh no. Ah, uh, no, 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 my friend. You look that way. Do we go that way or this way? We're this way. Oh, I think we're lost. <laughs> we lost? Yep. No. <laughs> he looked that way. He's like, which way did we go? You see the... He's, uh, he's, uh, he was uh, eating the, the berries and hallucinating. Oh, yeah. You see <laughs> down the view, eh? Oh, wow. We're heading to the coffee, uh, coffee coffee factory, yeah. where they take the beans yeah, and, roast and they roast it, yeah. 
And, and then the bad beans, they send it to a Starbucks. Yeah. Yes. That's bullshit. That's you know how much it paid for a coffee? Yeah, yeah, that's how they make the money. We're here at the coffee um, factory. Ka coffee. Ka Kahawa. Kahawa factory. Kahawa. Coffee factory. Coffee factory. And we're gonna be taking a tour. And she's one of the owners here. She is the owner. Or she, her and her husband are the owner. What do you guys, What do you think about the, the walking and the tour so far? I love it. All right. Remind me a lot of. Mm, Republic. Smells like coffee. Look at that. What? Sorry. Huh? Kahawa means coffee in Swahili, our language, and 1893 is when our story begins. While coffee's origins can be traced back to ancient forests in Ethiopia, coffee had to travel around the world before it made its way back to Africa in 1893. This is an iced coffee, yeah? Then I have sugar, and this is like liquid sugar, brown sugar that I just melted. But if I put that, oops, if I put, this is the brown sugar, if I put this inside, it will not melt. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's why I have this whole, this uh, liquid. Mm -hmm. So here, this is my iced coffee. So whoever wants to try that is welcome. Then I have, here I have our coffee, uh, coffee bean with dark chocolate, so they have to eat. This is peanuts with dark chocolate. The highlight of the afternoon was meeting this beautiful cat named Munch. Just look at that design on his fur. Beautiful, just like the village and coffee farm tour we took. Very, very good. We sure enjoyed walking around and learning more about the village culture and drinking Kahawa coffee at the roastery. I will have to reach back out to Sammy at a later time to see if they pass the sugar mama and daddy law. In day two, part two of our safari venture, we go to our next destination, the Grand Melia Hotel, a five-star hotel in the exotic natural setting of Arusha. Somehow we end up in the staff only area where they have a farm, chickens and lodging behind the hotel. Then we go to the cultural heritage center where a painting sold for over 180,000 US dollars and where Najwa learns how to play an African instrument. I think she has a future here as a musician. Psych! Thank you for watching and come again. Ding, ding, ding. Excuse me. Your boots are showing. Bumblebee tuna. Bumblebee tuna. <laughs> I can buy myself a